Morning guys. Bruce here, Tough Dog's Place. How you doing? Uh, I was going to tell you what I'm up to this morning. I'm working on the brakes on the cart and just kind of inspecting them because I know they don't work well. And what I've done is I've taken the brake caliper off and the shoes, the pucks, are excessively worn, which is no surprise. You see that ridge on there where the disc is eaten away? Well, they're about there to the rope. I found some on the internet from gokartparts.com, which also comes up as manufacturing MFG supply uh, for $8.29 a set and I ordered them. And in the meantime, until those arrive, I'm going to put these back in here opposite sides of what they were and hopefully I can just ride on this edge right here for a week or so because I don't ride it every day, you know. And see if I can't get a little bit of bite out of that. It may cock funny and not do well, but I'm going to try to do that. And just see what kind of biting action I can get off of that. If that works out at all, when the new ones get here, well, we'll see. I'll let you know. This bolt, I don't know if you can tell. Let me get the other one. The other one looks like new, shiny, undaunted, fine threads, which is okay. But this one looks like it's got battery acid all over it. The bottom one, I don't know what caused that. It's just odd. It looks like it has battery acid corrosion all over it. I'm going to wire brush it out. And uh, this little brake is so simple. The way that it works, this lever, I don't know that you'd be able to tell because I didn't disassemble it completely, but it's angled down in there. I actually have it. Well, that's the way it mounts on, just like that. Anyway, when you pull it forward, it pushes this pin outward because of the angle on the lever bar. That sets in the little hole there, like so. And when you pull it forward, oh, you can. I don't know if you can see this. Anyway, it pushes that out which pushes this metal plate out. I took a wire brush lightly to it. You can see the hole where that pin rubs and pushes the whole puck out. But what I also noticed they're different thicknesses. You would think they'd be the same, right? I know it's not much. You can't tell. But one is thicker than the other. which tells me that this part was not sliding back and forth in the little metal channel down in there. So I'm going to clean that all out and apply a little bit of grease so it has something to slide on right here so it does like it's supposed to. So that when I get the new ones, this one says series BA and a bunch of numbers. BA1547-3CCWS2 Thomas Manufacturing and then it's real blurry but it says something Ohio no nope, I don't know I can't really make it out and on the back it's forged in the cast Thomas Manufacturing but they're not round they're They've got elongated sides, one's longer than the other, which keeps them. Once you put them in, they got to stay that way. So the best I can hope for is opposite side them and see what happens. So that's what I'm going to try, and we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know after I get it back together and give it a try. All right, guys. In this little bit, I'm just going to do a quick compression test on this 8 horsepower Tecumseh, just because I'm curious. 
I'm getting ready to replace the spark plug anyway. So I've got the key off. I'm going to try to figure out a way to hold that throttle open. I guess I should have done this before I started. Take the return spring off, that'll help. trickier than I thought. In this model I gotta hold it on there. We're at zero. It's partially open. about 52 or about 60 it's about half of what it should be huh well there's signs that we need to uh, open that rascal up and probably ring it and lap the valve I'm going to try it again just to see if anything different happens about 65 all right now we know these eight horsepower Tecumseh's I took the original plug out and it's lying right here it was a little carbon fouled and you can see that there we go a little carbon fouled. I cleaned it up the other day and the gap looked like it was completely closed. So I stuck a feeler in it and it was 20. Oh, wow! I don't remember ever hearing the spark plug running at 20. I looked it up on the internet and yep, that's what it's supposed to be. So, I got a new one. I replaced my plug, Briggs and Stratton brand. RJ19LM is what I was advised off the internet to get. And we're going to check that gap. Set it at 20. And put it in. And see how it does. It appears to already be at 20, which is convenient. Brand new little rascal. Before I screw that in there, I'm going to test it. See if we see a blue spark out of that rascal at all or not. Turn the key on. So we're actually getting fire. No, and just as before, don't see anything. So imagine the points and condensing this thing needs serviced also. That's something for another day. We are going to check it though to see if it actually hits. Valve on. Put that throttle return spring back up like it was. Choke on. Get a little bit. 
Yeah. Hey guys, just showing you what I've been up to today. I bought this safety belt four point harness off eBay the other day. It was eleven dollars. It actually cost more for shipping than it did for the harness. Uh, I think it's BIM Industries. Anyway, they look very nice. However, they did not come with uh, these uh, metal ends and the bolts constructed right inside them. However, they didn't come with nuts, so I had to go to a hardware store and buy 7 16 by 20 inch threads, fine threads. They were a little tricky to find, but I got some. And, of course, there was no place to mount them on the cart so I added this bar right above where the back seat is with two tabs welded on it one there one there and of course I welded that in place I put a little tab down here on the bottom bar on each side for the actual seat belt part to fasten to. And I always take my uh, seats out when I'm going to be doing any welding because I don't want to get burns in that canvas. It'd be too expensive and labor intensive to have to repair it or replace it. So it's just easier to take them out. And while I was at it and out welding, this weld right here had cracked on me, so I re-welded that. And I added this piece across for the front of the front of the headrest, the top. So it has a little crossbar piece there. Um, so anyway, I'm getting ready to put the seats back in and bolt that on there. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like after I get it all installed. Yeah, it's going to be nice to not feel like you're going to get thrown out. Alright, show you when I get, get it put in. Hey guys, how you doing? I got the seatbelt in. Just going to get in and show you. 
what they look like. Remember, these are only 11 bucks. Plus more for shipping than it did for the actual belt. Hindsight being 2020. The initial tabs I welded on. Well, you know, I had to move them. Anyway, there's the unit. Pretty good. I usually have to hang on like this to keep them getting thrown over on good corners. I think it's going to be great. Anyway, let me show you what I had to do. I couldn't believe how long those were. Those are crazy long. These things were so long, I had them extended as far as they would go. And you know I had my mounting tabs right here, right above the seat. And they were so long, I couldn't even tighten them up. So I had to move them down to that lower frame. I put them 10 inches apart, which that way they wouldn't cut into my neck, but yet they still cover my, they hit my shoulders, not just my clavicle which would be more comfortable if you ever get in a situation where you actually need them to hold you in. Anyway, I cut them tabs off, grounded them down, which was actually good because this one, by the time I got done, was right on top of the gas cap, sticking out. Just I knew that was going to be a pain in my seat. So, it actually worked out for the best. Anyway, just wanted to share. After I did that compression check yesterday and put that new spark plug in, I rode it for a minute. And then when I got back to the house, it died and I never could get it started again. So I'm going to put the old plug back in and see if that makes a difference. I don't know. doesn't make sense. They're gap different. I think I have the old one gap at 25. So we'll see. I'll let you know.